गोमांतक टीवी खाते हाँ डॉक्टर मुकुल रायतुरकर हाँ एक चाइल्ड स्पेशलिस्ट आ मैरेथन रनर आज आम मनात आसा संध्या रमेश एक अशी चली जिने गोयचो रनिंग इतिहास बदलून दौल तिने दादल परस ही खूब फुढ़ पाली ती आ स्वता वचन तिने साउथ आफ्रिके जगत एक सगत महत्व की आ कठिन अभी अल्ट्रा मैरेथन नव्वद किलोमीटर की कॉम्रेड्स मैरेथन धावन आई इतलेत नी तो केनियन्सा बरबर रन हाई ऑल्टिट्यूड ट्रेनिंग तिने अभ्यास एल्यूड किपचोगे जैका गोट ऑफ रनिंग ग्रेटेस्ट ऑफ ऑल टाइम मैरेथनर ते मारक वो तिने तजो एडवाइस घो ती वेलकम मिस संध्या रमेश थैंक यू एंड थैंक यू फॉर हैविंग मी या सो कैन यू टेल अस व्हाट इज इट दैट इंस्पायर्ड यू टू रन एंड व्हेन डिड यू बिगिन दिस रनिंग जर्नी ऑफ योर्स यस सो आई वाज अ ट्रैक एथलीट थ्रू माय चाइल्डहुड सो वन वुड फाइंड मी मोर इन द प्लेग्राउंड्स देन इन द क्लासरूम एंड मोर ऑन द रोड्स देन इन माय होम सो आई यूज्ड टू आल्सो रन द 100 मीटर्स द 200 मीटर्स इन स्कूल I captained the throwball team. Uh, I played kho kho. I also had a chance to uh, represent Jyoti Pas India Academy under the captaincy of Mithali Raj, the erstwhile India women's team uh, captain. That's nice. And um, in you know, sometime in the twenties, when I also started my working uh, career, I noticed that uh, one, I had definitely gained weight. There was a lack of physical activity. to just the whole vitality confidence uh, you know my mental health there were so many aspects that i thought i did not have any other hobby or passion apart from work and coming home and uh, it was that time in about uh, 2016 uh, that my sister nisha ramesh who is a qualified chartered accountant she was also mother of two uh, that time she had just finished her first full marathon and uh, she told me why don't you give endurance running a try being a track athlete uh, you know you don't think of anything more than 200 meters even 400 meters seems very hard for you uh, but with her encouragement i started running and uh, my first 10 kilometers with her in 2016 continues to be my most uh, memorable one um, where i reconnected with the joy of running and uh, you know feeling physically very active So in this entire joyful journey of yours which is the most remarkable event that you feel which is the most memorable and the most difficult for that matter uh, Dr Mukul you know being a fellow runner that uh, all our practice runs race runs we learn something yes. and it is enjoyable in its own way but uh, today i'll pick about three runs which i will talk about very yes. briefly yes uh, the first one uh, was in 2019 Uh, which was the Tata Mumbai Marathon. It was my first full marathon, and um, unfortunately, I had a bacterial pulmonary infection just before the marathon. And two days before the marathon, I injured my big toe. Okay. Uh, before I underwent all of this, I had a goal saying that I want to finish a full marathon in less than four hours and thirty minutes. Um, and uh, despite these physical challenges, I was able to do that. that run also reinstated the importance of mental training and emotional stability for me you know and how it impacts performance so whether it is marathon running whether it is life whether it is career right whether it is family issues mm-hmm. i think the ability uh, to have to be in that space where you are calm and you are able to have more control of the outcomes uh, is one is it, it was one big learning for me from that run The second one was also on the Tata Mumbai Marathon, but this time I did not run the full marathon. I ran as an ally to a person with visual impairment. Uh, so this segment of Tata Mumbai Marathon uh, was hosted by Adventures Beyond Barriers Foundation. Uh, they are an NGO that supports disability inclusion. And uh, that time, uh, 2020 was for when I first ran as an ally for a person with visual impairment. 
I also ran in 2023 as an ally for a person with visual impairment. Both times I really enjoyed the experience. You know, we were talking, exchanging stories about our life, uh, about the barriers we face. And uh, we had a lot of fun completing that 10 kilometers and uh, it really motivated me as a runner uh, to be able to be more empathetic and do my bit towards advancing disability inclusion in India. Uh, and the third one for me is the comrades. Uh, it was, you know, it is, it continues to feel like a superhuman uh, effort and achievement both. Uh, and yeah, we we'll talk more about it, I'm sure. <laughs> in the segment ahead. <laughs> yeah, so there is a humanist element to your entire sporting journey. And uh, tell me, how do you reconcile running with being? That how do you reconcile it with your day-to-day -day life? See, and, running, uh, um, honestly, builds a lot of discipline, mm. right? I think that's the first thing as a runner you start noticing. It impacts your daily life choices, right from when you wake up what do you do immediately when you wake up? What do you put into your mouth every day? How many hours of sleep do you get? How often are you drinking water? So running, I feel it is not only about the sport or the joy, but it really impacts your everyday life and the choices that you make in your life. Uh, I think the other thing about endurance running in specific is, yes, it does build a lot of physical endurance. So you will notice that you have more energy throughout the day compared to a lot of your peers sometimes or compared to a lot of people who do not, you know, do daily sport and activity. But it also builds a lot of mental and emotional endurance. Um, and I believe that uh, all of us are, have life challenges, whether we are runners or not. Uh, there are family issues. There are deadlines in careers, there is pressure of revenue, there is pressure to deliver better every day. So our ability to also emotionally and mentally handle, uh, so the resilience that one builds, I believe actually compounds with a sport like endurance running. Yes, so running tends to empower you physically, mentally, as well as you can say spiritually. Right. I would add one more Dr. Mukul yeah. and that is socially. Yeah, excellent. So if you had to take our running group, the Ballistic Runners, uh, you know, you will see that so many of our friends we can lean on. Be it during my preparation for the comrades, I had runners coming out as early as 4 a.m. Uh, staying back as late as 12 p.m. during days in the go and summers, you know, we know how hot it gets. Uh, but coming with me on the bike, giving me water. Uh, so, it also builds a very strong support network and a support system for you. And I think, uh, yes, most of my great friends come from the running circles that I have been part of. So, as you said, Comrades, which is one of the toughest ultra marathons in the world and one of the oldest, has been a remarkable experience. In you. So, what would you like to say about Comrades Marathon? Your running, how it changed you? Uh, as a person who is attempting it for the first time, yes. I had only two objectives. One is to get to that start line injury free and the second was to finish the race. So if you are uh, competing for the comrades in the first time, these can be your only two objectives. Now let's talk about getting to the start line injury free. Uh, there were three big important factors that I believe contributed to that. Uh, the first one being my coach. Uh, Coach Daniel Vaz, in fact, gave me my training plan uh, for the comrades and he supported me, uh, you know, he modified my running plan based on how I was feeling. Sometimes I also, uh, I also fell ill in between. So, you know, how do you ensure that you're able to still pick up mileage after resting your body and recovering fully? He, he nudged me to do the 65 kilometers ultra in Kalimpong. Uh, which is also at a high altitude and lots of hills and that was a game changer. The second was ability to say no. You need to say no to many things, whether it is gatherings, family events, uh, you know, sometimes anything that may disrupt your running plan or your sleep. Uh, so second I would say is, you know, being able to say no a few times. And lastly, to be able to say no, you need the support of your family, friends, your neighbors, 
uh, you know, your running community, people who understand that this goal is important for you, right? And who support you in achieving that goal. So for me, these three elements were very important when it came to starting the race injury free and doing my training very well. Yeah. I think when I talk about being at the start line, uh, it is, you know, there are 20,000 runners from across countries. We had uh, almost 400 plus runners from India. Um, and <coughs> you start feeling positive and energetic. The 30th kilometer, I felt like quitting. You know, I was thinking, oh God, another 58 kilometers, who's going to run? It seems so far. You know, and that thought came into my mind. And uh, in about a few minutes, I started rationalizing that thought, saying, why am I feeling that way? Uh, you know, I could feel the energy. The, there was live tracking on the app. So I could feel my friends and family somewhere trying to connect with me, supporting me. I ask myself if I'm tired, if I'm physically actually not feeling capable of running. But it was none of that. And as soon as I became aware that it was just that the goal seemed so big and that was overwhelming me, I immediately shifted my mindset. And I said, I'm not going to quit. If somebody needs to take me off this race, they need to like carry me out of the road. And that's the only way I'm going to stop the race. So I think that was the second, um, you know, for... The marathon, the biggest philosophy is don't stop. Keep going, keep going, break it down. We need to control everything that goes on between our years for 12 hours. And, uh, you know, you will be able to achieve a lot of extraordinary things. Yes, Sandhya, you are not only the first runner from Goa to complete the Comrades Marathon. You are also the first to go to Kenya and study the high altitude training of the world champions. So would you like to tell us something about that? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I think um, one is we always thought genetically the Kenyans uh, and it's largely their genes that differentiate the, the, you know, the way they perform in the track events or the long distance events. Yes, that is a component. Physiology is a component. Their daily lives is a component. But a big component is discipline. You would look at their discipline, uh, the way they work hard, to be able to shave off a few seconds, a few minutes. Uh, they have so many running idols uh, with them, like Elliot Kip Kipchoge. So even if you are a world champion, no matter if you are an Olympian, you will still run with the younger runners. And that way one learns so much, so much from, from running as a process. So yes, I think high altitude training builds you better physiologically. But I think running in groups and running in communities, uh, is another way to actually enhance and improve your quality of running, which I think the Kenyans actually do very well. And, uh, yeah. So, you actually met a large number of Kenyans and among them, you were fortunate enough to meet Eliud Kipchoge himself and his coach. <laughs> so, what would you like to say on that? I would say, uh, I, would, I would talk about Eliud Kipchoge's remarkable statement, which is, no human is limited. <laughs> So all of us have dreams and my dream was to meet Eliud Kipchoge. Um, it was fascinating to see, uh, you know, how superhuman his quality is and his ability, uh, his gift is as a runner. At the same time, how human he is as a person. Uh, you know, he was very humble. He was driving a car. It was filled with athletes. He was training with their local athletes. And uh, I had an opportunity to also spend time with his coach, uh, Coach Patrick Sang. And uh, he continues to be in awe of some of these runners, uh, inspires them to continue to be humble, work very hard, work very hard towards their goals, uh, sacrificing everything apart from running. And um, their running philosophy is not to compete, uh, not to compete, but to compete and win. So any Kenyan runner will only talk about winning a race. They will not talk about completing the race. And I think that is a big, big uh, mindset shift. Uh, you know, that even as amateur runners, if we get, we can actually get a lot out of ourselves and uh, improve <laughs> our running efficiencies. Yes. Yeah, so you have dedicated yourself to running and you have dedicated yourself to continuing with your life goals in general. 
in a culture where it stereotypes women and tries to keep them limited to the kitchen and to raising a family, you have achieved so much. What is your message to the women of Goa? Yeah, and uh, yes, Dr. Mukul, I think uh, you hit the nail on its head. And I would say that gender stereotype is something that, uh, you know, women across the world face maybe a little more intensely in India. Um, I'd say that, and it's largely because women are naturally taught to be the primary caregivers, which means that women are taught to put themselves second, third, and family first, all the time, right? And what happens is till the time that either you get a critical illness, chronic pains, or you become obese, uh, you don't realize the, and the, the importance and the value of you know investing in health and well-being. I think running also builds an identity for you. It builds an identity for you, you know, among your household, among your family, among your neighbors. And uh, these running goals help you keep getting better, wanting to achieve more. So conversations go beyond what is, you know, what is get being cooked in the house today to, you know, discussing only family matters, to actually putting your goals, your health and well-being ahead of you. So in Goa, I know we famously close most of our conversations by saying Moga Su. Yeah, and it's really saying that uh, promote self, promote love and positivity. I would, you know, my message to all women would be promote self-love. So start with loving yourself uh, by proactively working on your health and well-being. You will be able to uh, not only lead a more healthy life, but also a happier. So, Sandhya has actually gone ahead and outrun the men in the Goan community and achieved something that has not even been achieved by men. What would you say to that? <laughs> yeah, I think the Comrades Marathon does not differentiate if you're man or woman, you need to finish in 12 hours. Uh, so, I think running that way is a huge leveler. Yeah. And I'm hoping that while I have been the first to represent the state, that 2024 is going to be a great year where we are going to have a lot more men and women actually participate and compete in the Comrades Ultra Marathon. So it has been very nice to interact with you. It's a great opportunity for all the women of Goa to interact with an athlete who has broken all stereotypes and has led the path to fitness. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me.